Hello everyone and welcome back to Galactic Civilizations 3 Newbie Tutorial. I'm your host, Colors Fade, and this is episode 5. Doing this series of videos pretty much as a let's play. You're watching me play the game and I'm trying to explain everything that's important to you as a new player. Since there is not very much in the way of documentation for this game. So we're on turn 91 which is not quite halfway through a game of this size on a map like this. We have 12 factions and you can see the balance of power map, the chart, is now pretty evenly broken up. You can see how the widths work out. The Iconian refuge are at the bottom, the Thalans, the Torians. And, and we went through diplomacy last episode and we saw that there aren't very many factions with a lot of planets. Actually, the Altarians in the, have five, and the Iridium have six, and they're kind of like the big players. And then the Kryn Syndicate right now is number one in balance of power. And if we go to Diplomacy, we're trying to keep them friendly. They're a really hostile race, as are the Snathy, who are already furious, and they're probably going to declare war on us really soon. Um, if we go look, we can't trade with them because we need to wait. We traded with them and we need to wait a few turns. I think the minimum amount of turns you have to wait before you can trade with someone again is eight turns. So we're going to look. The the Iconians have four colonies. They have some tech that we'd like to have. One of the things that you can do is offer a non-aggression Packed to another faction and they may find that of some value and you may be able to get some tech out of that it says both parties agree not to declare a war in each other I think that that pact is good for either 20 or 50 turns I can't remember pretty much anything as far as treaties goes I mean, it's usually in the 50 turn range that it's good for you can see that your have three colonies. Nobody has a lot of colonies yet. And in fact, the Kryn at seven are the big leaders. They have the most amount of colonies. And in fact, they have some legions already defending some of their planets. Uh, two of their planets, Chryseth and Chryseth Beta, have a legion each defending. And they have atmospheric cleansing. They have some Promethean. They have six of those. They have a bunch of Illyrium and a bunch of antimatter, so they're mining those. So last episode, the cool thing that we did was we we established a fog of war treaty with the Altarians so we could see their fog of war, and we saw that they had this Promethean they were mining. And we decided to buy this Jorgenrud Starbase 1 from it. It took quite a bit of money and tech to buy it from them, but it gives us some of the only Promethean in the galaxy. And if we scroll back on the minimap here, we can see the Altarians up here, and they're scattered around. Um, and the various colors, the orange is the Kryn, and they have seven planets, they have the most, and they're right up against our borders. So, the Kryn are somebody we either want to try to keep happy, or we're going to have to go to war with them sooner or later. The only people who have de declared war with us are the Drenjin, and they're mining this antimatter up here, and they have... A star base down here so we know that that the Drenjin are probably somewhere up here in this part of the map which means they're a long ways away from us but they declared war against us and we expect their warships will be making their way down here to earth and to Ziller too our two planets that are most most northward on the map so we expect them to come at some point in time and we need to be building warships to take care of them. So here in our Sol shipyard we're building small hull escorts but we had unlocked the technology that allows medium hulls. So I'm going to go in here to the shipyard that's not currently building anything and this is when I'm finally going to start building my own ships. You can see that the game provides default ships based on the technology you have and there's a ranger here that has a shield system and four missile weapons and it costs two antimatter to build when i get medium hulls myself as a player i feel like that's when i need to start 
customizing the loadouts for ship not necessarily changing the actual ship designs you can get some really cool ship designs online and through steam there are some really talented ship builders like airmaster and some other people who are just making really great ship designs they do things like star wars ships and star trek ships and all kinds of things from other tv shows they're great designers if you want to use their designs you should go get them and um, let them know how much you appreciate their work for myself i'm just going to show you how to do ship design so we're six minutes into the video almost let's let's show you how i do it you click the button design ship and you click new design and i'm not actually going to design the shape of the ship what i'm going to design is the loadout so i'm going to scroll down to medium hull and i'm going to look at all these hull types and you can see there are some some star trekky kind of designs here for the terrans this looks like the Reliant almost from Star Trek 2. And then they have some other codes. If you if you bend the wings on this, this, this looks like a, a lot like a bird of prey from Star Trek. Here's a very obvious Star Trek inspired ship. But what I want to do is look up here at our resources. We can build a lot of uh, missile weapons because we have a ton of antimatter. Thulium is needed for kinetic weapons, and we don't have a lot of that, and we don't have a lot of Illyrium either, which is needed for beam weapons. So antimatter and missiles are probably going to be our primary technology for quite some time. I like the look of this ship a lot, and I also like some of these ships for like kinetic things of that nature, but I like this ship a lot. That's kind of a neat design that's kind of blocky and I'm not a big fan of that and then of course there's a, a classic um, bomber design and to give you people uh, a little bit of personal information I am an ex Air Force vet so I very much like the stealth bomber it's very neat this kind of gives that design so I'm gonna make this a missile ship so we're gonna start equipping it we researched the ion drive which gives us the best amount of moves that we have as plus two moves so if we put an ion drive on the ship you can see our moves over here have moved to six per turn and it uses 20 of the available 70 in space we probably all also want to put some environmental support on there it increases the ship's range by 13 and it only has a life support mass of 4.6 so that moves us to 25 and now what I want to do is start putting weapons on it. I'm going to show you something about ship rolls here too. There are a lot of ship rolls in the game and we should talk about them right now. There are things like escort, capital, guardian, interceptor, support. The three most important ones are support, capital, and escort. Support ships sit in the back and they are not engaged by the enemy until all the other ships are destroyed. So they typically, you want to give them technologies over here on the far right tab that these are like fleet wide technologies so you want your support ships to have fleet wide technologies that affect all the other ships in the fleet capital ships are ships that you typically want to have offensive capability on and then escorts are going to be the first targeted ships in your fleet as long as you're dealing with hull size small or greater if you have tiny ships it doesn't matter what their hull size is they're going to be out in front so all of our ships in our fleet are going to be mediums and that means if we make an escort it's going to be targeted by the enemy first so escorts are where you want to put defensive things like shields and armor and chaff to prevent missile weapons and then capitals are what you want to put offensive weapons on. So we're going to make this a capital ship and it's going to have all offensive weapons and our best offensive weapon right now is the Sparrow rocket. The Sparrow missile has a missile of att attack of two compared to the space rocket which has a missile of attack of one but the difference is the Sparrow missile requires an antimatter. Fortunately we have 63 so we can build a lot of these ships. We can put two, well we can put one Sparrow missile on the ship right now, and we can't even put another space rocket on there. We ha we're left with 21 points of space on our ship that we can't do anything with because we can't fit another Sparrow missile on there because it requires a missile mass of 24.4. We could put some defense on there, but I don't want to. I just want to make it a capital ship. But I'm looking at this now. The chaff is going to take a mass of 6.6. .6. So here's what we're going to do. 
I'm going to change my mind, <laughs> which happens frequently given the circumstances, and I'm going to make this an escort. It's going to have, let's see, here's what I want to do. I don't know exactly what kind of off the offense my enemies are going to use, so I'm going to prepare for everything. I'm going to put some hull plating on the ship. I'm going to put some shields, and I'm going to put some chaff on there. And this is going to be our all-purpose ship. It's going to have missiles for offense, and it's going to have a bunch of defense. And we're going to save it. And when you save it, that's when you can choose what kind of battle role you want it to be, whether you want it to be capital or escort or something else. We're going to choose escort, and I'm going to give it a name. And I like to call my missile ships longbows, longbow. And I like to use M for medium hull and a 1 because it's the first version of it. We're going to save it. And that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to do a new design, and I'm going to design two other ships, and these are just going to be offensive. They're going to get the environmental support, the ion drive, and then this ship is just going to do kinetic damage. I can put a lot of kinetic weapons on it, so I can get a three attack out of it. I like to call my kinetic ships Krulls. M1. It's going to be a capital ship because it doesn't have any defense, so I don't want it to get targeted first. I don't want it to get hit because it has no defense, it just has hit points. And I'm also going to do a third design, and I'm going to use this fancy ship that almost looks like a bird of prey. I'm going to give it some environmental support, the ion drive, and then I am going to give it the enhanced lasers. Oh, and I can only fit one of the enhanced lasers on it. So this is almost a useless ship as well. You can only fit one offense on it, and then there's 22 points left over, so I might as well also make it a defensive ship. So it's going to be another escort, but it's going to have a beam weapon. And I like to call these Cyclops. If you're an X-Men fan, you get the reference. So those are the three ships that I'm going to build first. And I have these escorts that are small hulls. And I've taken my previous tiny hull ships and sent them to Earth, but I want to send these guys over to Ziller because I anticipate that being probably the first planet that the Drenjin will try to attack. And now I'm going to go into my shipyard and I'm just going to start making all these ships. I'm going to make a bunch of longbows because I have a whole bunch of antimatter up here. A couple of Krulls, a couple of Cyclopses, and they're all going to just um, dock themselves in the shipyard. And medium ships have a hull logistics of six you can see here the logistics are six so we need as many logistics as possible and that's what we were getting ready to research last time we're doing interstellar governance but when we come across the capsules we're coming over here to fleet logistics and trying to grab that so now we have an idle colony and this is what we talked about last episode was I was going to take the space elevator and move it. I'm going to do that now because I want to move it here because I want a power plant, a fusion power plant to go in the middle and affect all of these manufacturing things around it. And I'm also going to save this spot up here between the starport and the capital for another improvement that I know I can get in relatively short order. And I will show you that. In engineering, Let's see. Engineer is it engineering or warfare? I believe it's engineering. Oh yeah, way down here. Hull strengthening, life support. Hmm. I can't find this thing that I'm used to finding. I'm <laughs> I'm looking for something that I'm accustomed to seeing and I'm not seeing it. I'm, oh, hull strengthening. Let's see. No, nope, that's not it large-scale construction, that's not it either. Hmm. Where is this thing that I'm used to looking at? Whole strengthening, that's not it. Am I sure it's not in warfare? War College, Stellar Marines, nope, it's not there either. 
well I don't want to bore you guys with all of this but there is something that I'm accustomed to seeing and I'm not seeing it right now and it's a particular type of improvement um, that's a very nice thing to have and I'm just not seeing it invasion optimization it's not under there it's not under stellar marines it's not under fortification um, it's not under force fields hmm okay well, I'll worry about it later have an idle ship over here so here is our survey ship and it's going to grab capsules so we're going to go over here and we're going to flip over to fleet logistics which is still requiring us 53 turns of research and we're going to hope to get a 15 percent bonus which we didn't we got Illyrium so we can move this guy too and then this other ship same thing our prospector which has 15 moves now and it did not get the 15 percent either but it's got some more capsules over here and a lot more moves to deal with so Oh, it's just, it's grabbing treasury stuff, which is great, but it's not giving, there we go, 15% fleet logistics, and we'll get it ready, there's some more capsules, a capsule up to the north, there's a bunch of capsules over here, it's in a, it's in a very rich spot for a lot of anomalies, and it's the end of our turn, so we want to go back to the thing we were trying to research, interstellar governance and do our turn and earn actual research on interstellar governance when we come to the end of it. This constructor we had placed out here to grab this ascension crystal and this economic relic. So he's done. The Galactic News Network is going to inform us of the Actuarial Agency has finished compiling its galactic census identifying which factions are the most populous. The Kryn, obviously, with seven planets, have the most people. The Altarians had five or six planets, and the Iridium had six, so that makes sense that they're all at the top of this list. Planets are power. They are everything. Our space elevator got built, and now I think it's almost safe to put the planet on it because our approval is 5.1 and we have 5 billion people on there. We're going to take an approval hit after we build a city and our, and our population grows. We can do a couple of things here. I could build Kimberly's Refuge, which there's one per galaxy and nobody ever builds, really. It requires one Monsantium, which we have. And it adds plus three for adjacency bonuses but we we don't have anything around there that we care about so what I want to do is put a city here it's gonna get a level 4 level up because of everything adjacent to it so we're gonna build that and that city is gonna do really good it's gonna give us a plus 3 population cap and at level 4 it's gonna give us a plus 100 percent population cap so we're gonna get a lot more people on our planet which is gonna be a lot more manufacturing but our approval is going to take a hit because we're only prepared for 5.1 billion people. However, we're going to quickly research some technology that should fix that. Over here on Mars, it's the same kind of thing. Um, I have some planetary soil upgrades. We finally have some terraforming tech. And what I wanted to do was create a wheel. So I'm going to try to do that with this terraforming tech. Oh, so this is interesting. We can't we can't terraform around this central node where, where we're, I would like to put a fusion power plant, but we can terraform next to the port of call, and a missionary center would be great there. So that's what we're going to do there. So we're going to do two terraforming techs, and then we'll put buildings on those places. And we're back to our survey ship. Interstellar governance is two turns away. We need to go back to fleet logistics, which has been knocked down to 42. Oh, and all we got were experience points. So we'll get him ready. And then the prospector, our mercenary ship, will come down here and try to earn another 15%. Oh, did not. And he won't reach the next point because it's five tiles away. 
So this is the game we play. Come back here, go back to Interstellar Governance, and end our turn and get that actual research for Interstellar Governance. It's not quite the end of the turn. This constructor we sent up here to grab these Ascension Crystals. I like to play with Ascension Crystals on Abundant, and it is a neat way to win, and so what you don't want to do is neglect grabbing these when nobody else is. And we can see up here the Thalen Contingency has captured an Ascension Crystal. The United Planets will be meeting in five turns for the first time. We need more administrators assist to build more star bases. The Archean Empire has changed to a media assimilation government, which is woe to those who are next door to them because they're going to get overwhelmed. Um, what I wanted to show in diplomacy, though, was the United Planets. Now that all the factions have more or less run into each other, you can go over here and you can see that the next meeting is in five turns. It'll be the first meeting. We're going to elect a UP chair, which is going to get some nice perks. And the faction that is leading for the UP chair is the Kryn at 13% and the Altarians behind them at 12%. We're at 7%, so we're not going to be in the UP. Which is unfortunate because if you can get the UP chair, the first resolution that you want to that you want to make is anybody who defies the UP, everybody automatically goes to war with them. And that is a great one to have, but we're not going to be the UP chair, so it's not going to happen. We're back to Interstellar Governance is one turn away, and we're going to go for Fleet Logistics. We're going to switch over, hope we don't have a burnout. And that little guy did not pick up 15%. This guy, we're going to hope, picks up 15% somewhere. Oh, he got some antimatter. He got 15% Fleet Logistics there. That's awesome. He's going to go down here and get a bunch of money. And then he's going to manage to get this last capsule. Oh, and he just got experience points, nothing else. But Fleet Logistics is now knocked down to 32 turns compared to 64 when we started out. And Interstellar Governance is about to happen. That gives us three administrators. Here is a nice message that you will not often see in the game. It looks like you're having a bit of trouble with the Drenjan Empire, Mr. Bradley. Please accept this ARS prototype bringer of fire M3-5 from us to help with your war effort. They gave us a ship. They like us so much and they saw us in trouble that they gave us a ship. Look, you can see she's friendly. She's on our inner circle. We could be allies with her real easy. We have an open borders treaty. We are trading with each other. You are skilled in diplomacy. The only thing that's a negative is we have opposite ideologies. They like us a lot, and they gave us a free ship, which is great. Um, if you go up to victory conditions, I'll talk about this now. One of the victory conditions is diplomatic victory, and that is when you ally with 11, all the other civilizations. You can't be at war with any of them. You have to be allies with everybody who's left. So if you're at war with someone, you want to eliminate them first and then create an alliance with everybody who's left. You need to be really careful if you choose this victory type because, for instance, let's say there's only three factions left. Let's say it's you, the Iconians, and the Archeans. And let's say the Archeans have an alliance with the Iconians. If you try to ally it with the Archeans, that makes the Archeans have an alliance with the two remaining factions, the Iconians and you. And the Archeans win. You do not. So you have to be the only faction that is allied with everybody in order to win this condition. I rarely go after the diplomatic victory. I prefer conquest or ascension. And that's how we'll do this game. But I want you to be aware of that because it is a victory condition. Interstellar governance is complete on our research tree. And what I really wanted was right after that populist party for morale plus 5%. The higher our morale, the higher we can tax them. We're at 100% now. We get really nice bonuses to planetary morale. So I'm going to move this until I'm about 90%. And then what I want to show you real quickly, we're going to go to Earth. I want to show you our morale is at 81% because already our population is climbing. If you look at your approval, you can see, look at the bottom part of this tooltip, this dialogue that comes up. 
because we have high approval of 81%, we're getting a 27.4% bonus to growth, which means our population will grow quickly. We're getting a 13.4% bonus to raw production and we're getting an almost 50 percent growth for influence which influence is how you get these tiles under your influence and influence is our multiplier for tourism so we now have 23,400 22,343 tiles under our influence and a tourism income of two percent just for planet earth we have a port of call on every planet we own so that is why we are earning money, good money, every turn now. 50 credits per turn. Meanwhile, we're back over here. We're going to switch back over to Fleet Logistics, 34 turns. We're going to see if we get 15%. We don't. We're going to send this little ship up here. Then we're going to go grab this other ship way over here. And he has access to a whole bunch more anomalies. Anomalies have just been dropping like flies. We're hoping to get another 15%. And there it is, right there. And another 15%. Fabulous. So that puts Fleet Logistics now 15 turns away from being researched. That is wonderful. That is absolutely fabulous. And here is the ship that the Altarians gave us. It has two missile and two beam weapons. And since it's so close to Altaria, and it's so since it's so close to the Jorgenrud starbase that we grabbed, I'm just going to send it over and dock it in the starbase and use it as extra defense. I really don't care anything else about it, but while I'm there, our first capital ship... So capital ships are considered medium hulls or bigger and as soon as you make one you get that neat little movie I'm gonna take this opportunity to inspect this capital ship that just came out of the Altarians to see what they're doing it's always good to inspect your enemies when you have a chance the Altarians are using beam weapons and shields you don't see any missiles or any kinetic weapons so that's just some information to keep in our back pocket the Iridium are trying to trade with us. They want an exploration treaty. They want to give us targeting specialization, but we have not chosen a weapon specialization, so we don't want to choose this because there's a better one, miniaturization. You don't want to take specializations from people if you haven't already chosen one of the three yourself. So you want to make sure, and they also want all of our money. They want a ridiculous trade here, which we're not going to do. But what we are going to do is continue to survey and continue to try to get our research done for fleet logistics so that we can take a bunch of those medium ships and group them together. And we just did that, which is great. We got another 15%, and that makes fleet logistics. Fleet logistics is almost done. Um, our prospector over here. Let's see if he can get it. 15% fleet logistics, and that's it. It's done. So with just the capsules, we took 60 something that was going to require 64 turns of research, and with just the capsules, we completed it. We never had to spend an actual legitimate turn researching this thing. We're going to want to do the same thing for deep space logistics to get another plus 20 to it. But in the meantime, we're going to go back to our populist party. And this ship is going to head up in this direction to get that last capsule. It's time for an election for our government. We've been keeping everybody happy, so we should win in a landslide, which we're going to do. 92%, I think that's our highest so far, which is great. It reminds me that my government has plus two trade route diplomacy, and we have, if we look at our civilization and our trade, we have three trade routes all with a crin so these should be earning us diplomacy with the crin and if we go to diplomacy screen and look we can see that the crin are now cordial they're no longer upset with us they're cordial it's yellow it's still way better than we were and we are less ripe for conquest instead of a three negative dashes we have one because we're starting to build ships the Snathy are furious, and there's almost nothing you can do about it. Um, 
I what I have found out in my experience playing the game is if you become friends with the snathy it's almost by luck you first of all you need to be malevolent and second of all if you just pump out a lot of ships early sometimes you can just convince them to be friendly but they're furious already they're gonna go to war with us soon but they only have two planets because the Kryn are cordial with us they want to trade and again they're offering us armor spice which is fabulous but we don't have very much Promethean and they want all of our money they want every single last credit we have a bunch of thulium a bunch of xanthium they want too much so you decline those trades and move on so here's our little ship and now we're going to switch over to deep space logistics to grab this capsule we didn't get the 15 percent bonus we'll come over here and try to grab it from somewhere else and because uh, we moved our move was going to require more than one turn it, we spent a turn doing that research the Iconians are letting us know that our trade is, is good so here we are it's the end of the turn and I don't want to spend an actual turn researching that I want to go back to get this populist party thing because morale is important you can you can eventually just crank up the taxes late in the game from the midpoint on if you can get all the really good morale tech this ship oh, again end of the turn its moves were, took it past the turn so we're at the United Planets. The Kryn Syndicate have the lead for the UP chair, but we know that the Altarian Resistance was in second place at 12%, so we're going to vote for the Altarians. And the final vote comes out to the Kryn Syndicate. You can look over here, hover over it, and see who all voted for them. Even the, even the Altarian Resistance voted for them. <laughs> and the only people who voted for the Altarian Resistance was the Terran Alliance and the Snathy Revenge. So the Kryn are the, are the new UP chair. and they're going to get to propose the United Planets things. We got 15% for deep space logistics. We're going to get another 15% there, which is fabulous. We're going to come down here and see if we can get another 15%. Oh, nope. But that moves us 30% closer. And so you can see we went from 60 some turns to 43, which is great. And then come back here to Populous Party and get ready to take that. We have an idle Earth. Our city is built. We can now handle a population of 14 billion thanks to our city. And we only have 5 billion on the planet and our approval is 81%. This slot up here I want to save and this one here I want to save. So I don't want to build anything. So what I'm going to do is use the Aid Research Project to fill the queue for a while. Tensions between our people have been reduced thanks to the open border treaty you signed. Great. Super. We're going to go back to keep doing this. Logistics. We need the logistics for our fleets. So if we can get the 15% bonus it's always awesome. We didn't get it there. So we're going to go back. Populist Party is two turns away from being finished research. And again, you just keep going. I know it's a little tedious to do this, but flipping back and forth between this is so helpful for those big research projects like, like logistics you basically get those things for free so even though it seems a little tedious you should do this now populist party is going to be one turn away and we're just going to get such a great morale boost from it so we get another random ideology event it's going to give us t plus 20 points wherever way we go I don't really want to spend um, twice plus 20% on benevolence but 
the plus 10% diplomacy would be really nice to keep more people from going to war with us. On the other hand, malevolence is the line I like to take because of the bonuses. So I'm going to choose malevolent. That gives us an ideology point, which we're going to spend over here. So we're going to get implacable in the motivation line. It's the fourth one in. And it gives you access to the death furnace. These terrifying death furnaces will make a planet substantially more productive. And they earn a malevolent ideology point every five turns. The death furnace gives a plus three level up adjacency bonus for science or manufacturing. It's absolutely awesome. We could put it on Earth. It's still going to take us a few turns to get a factory. So we could put the death furnaces right here. You can see it's going to be leveled up to a plus 8. It's going to give 8% con to construction. It's going to give a big bonus to everybody around it. Or we could put it on a planet where we're doing a lot of science, but Kenna Hui 2 is where we're doing science and we don't have anywhere to really build a wheel and make use of it. So Earth is our best bet. So we might as well put it down there and we're going to move it to the top of the queue. It's going to take 8 turns to build, but the cool thing is, it earns a malevolent ideology point every five turns. So, might as well build it. We go back to our ships, and we're back to doing the research shuffle. Deep Space Logistics requires 33 turns to finish. And I'm torn about, should I go up and get that one or come down there? I'm going to come down. Same thing over here. Grab this guy. We didn't get the 15% like we were hoping. And he's not anywhere near another capsule. So we got to find a capsule for him to head toward. And there's a bunch down here. So let's send him down there. It's going to take him a turn and a half to get down there. This guy came over here all this way we sent him, it was a long journey to get over here, and he found a black hole that has one antimatter around it, and that is just, that seems like a waste to me, so I'm going to have him keep kind of exploring. You can always use them for explorers. Here is the Thalens, and they just, I think, yep, this is the Slyn that just made this deep space star base, and they're probably going to grab that antimatter, so our exploration may not be a big of a deal there. Populist party is done. It's going to significantly improve our morale. That gives us a chance to change to something else. I have two lines of research I'd really like to do at this point in time. I'd like to go for advanced construction because that's where the fusion power plant is, but it takes this. You've got to go through Xeno industrialization for nine turns and worker specialization, or we need better weapons. We already know that some of the, for, through diplomacy, we found out that some of the other factions have already grabbed targeting specialization. I prefer miniaturization whenever possible. So we could take miniaturization and in four turns have it, and we could trade for targeting, and that'll give us two out of the three specializations. We have a new citizen. I can choose a scientist and improve our research. I could choose an engineer and make shipbuilding faster. I could choose a leader who I can then move around wherever I want to. Diplomats, entrepreneurs. I never choose workers because they only help social buildings and once a planet is full then you need to move them around. We have three administrators in our pocket so I don't feel like administrator is necessary. And, and even though we're, we're at war with the Drenjin, they're so far away I don't feel like a, a general is a smart choice to make yet. We don't we're too far away from invading their planets. We don't have fleets. I don't feel like we need the ship. In 10 turns, maybe we will, but I don't think so. So I'm going to choose another scientist. And I'm going to go to Earth because Earth now is our number one research planet at 22.5, and Ziller is number two at 17.7. So I'm going to go to Earth where my person can have a bigger impact. I'm going to add him, and now our research is 25.6. And then we're going to come back here and play the research shuffle.
we didn't get the 15% there, we're going to grab some space junk. That capsule got us 15% to deep space logistics, which is fabulous. And then what I was researching was miniaturization specialization, so we'll go back to it and end our turn so we can actually earn the research for that. We've just received an anonymous tip that the Thalen Contingency has issued a statement of war against the Taurian regime. So the two greens, two races that use green as their color, are now at war with each other. Probably not a good idea. The two of them probably should have gone to war against the Drenjin. He wants to give an exploration treaty so we can see each other's things and he wants a whole bunch in return from us and we're just going to laugh but I noticed that I had a free trade agreement available to give to him we can get some things there's an ion optimization here moves plus 10 percent that would actually be really good but we haven't chosen our ion specialization yet our ion optimization He's telling us he has this high output drives. We want this drive miniaturization. So we need to choose this before we do a free trade agreement with him and get the other one. Because of the when you whenever you're whenever you have a choice to choose one of three there, you can only choose the one. And the only way to get the others is to trade for them. So you want to kind of do that smartly. Alright. Back to the shuffle. Deep Space Logistics 22 turns away. Can we get any more 15 percenters? Oh, I don't think so. Nope. Not going to be there. Maybe our other one. Oh, this guy's up here. And he's just kind of going to go up against the wall. The Iridium have issued a statement of war against the Thalen contingency. I have to think that all of that means that very soon the Snathy are going to want to go to war with us. And he grabbed that antimatter as we suspected he would. There's a precursor anomaly that I have not previously left a rally point for. So I will do that. I use the word, the letter P, to let myself know it's a precursor anomaly. Way down here we can get, there's another precursor anomaly right there. You need fleets to grab those, and that's why I use rally points. We could grab this Illyrium down here. We could grab this Ascension Crystal. I think we should probably do one of those two things. Or we should check out these black holes over here and hope that they have some antimatter here and we can grab more than one. Deep Space Logistics. We didn't earn anything there. No 15%. Now he's got to fly around. This is actually good. He can uncover this. There's an antimatter there if there if there was only one over here. Here's our fancy prospector with a lot of moves. And the nearest anomaly he has is way up here. So we're going to switch back to miniaturization specialization for weapons, and we're going to move him. That'll be the end of that turn. And the Iridium are going to give us a gift of 175 credits because they like us. That's always a really nice thing to experience when people want to give you a little bit of cash. Deep Space Logistics. We did not get the 15% there. So we switch our research back. And we move this guy along. The other ship is... I'm going to try to uncover it. Oh, so there it is. I don't know if those are close enough together for a single constructor to get. I don't think they are. But we will find out. Globally, you can see each turn now, our morale is being reduced by one, and I think the reason for that is because Earth's population continues to grow, and we don't have satisfactory morale tech. Hmm. 
Where is this guy gonna go? Hmm. I don't see... I'm looking for capsules. Oh, there's one right there. I come way down here. And he did not get the 15%. So, we move him back. Miniaturization specialization will be done after this turn. And that means we can trade for the targeting specialization that everybody else has. There it is. Research. So miniaturization specialization is done. We can start to go after some better weapons now. Which would be important. We need planetary invasion to, at some point in time, fight back the Drengen, but it's 23 turns away. I would like to go after this line of Xeno industrialization, and I certainly would like to have the deep space logistics. And the other big. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeez, there's nothing you can do about that. Easy to please is the last big morale tech that we can chase. It's morale plus four. It's awesome. Once you get this, you can really set your taxes very high. But it's 16 turns away and we have to go through population diversion, which is 11 turns away. So, I think... Excuse me. That the most important thing to do besides logistics right now... I would like to get drive miniaturization because we know someone has high output drives and we could trade for this. This is eight turns away, so let's do that. Nope. This ship. Although, before we do that, I'm going to go back to deep space logistics. Oh, we didn't get it there. I hate sneezing, it makes your nose run. It's just, why does the human body feel like it needs to do that? It's really annoying. There's a capsule way up here in Crin space, and there's a capsule over here, so. It's probably a good thing this episode is about to come to a halt because I'm having the whole runny nose issue. We're gonna go back up to it. Ion optimization, go for drive miniaturization, and end our turn and get some real research against drive miniaturization. So this is what I like to call the mid-game, as we're getting close to ending this episode. You're trying to build your empire, you're trying to get some of the more difficult researches by using the anomalies, you're trying to build down here on Earth trying to build as many of our medium hull ships as we can so that we can start to have a fleet. If we look at our military rank, we're 8 out of 12. We'd like to be closer to 2 or 3. We're trying to prepare for the Drenjin coming after us. We're trying to prepare so that we can go after the Drenjin. And, and, and in fact, here they are. Here are the Drenjin's fleet. 4 beam weapons and 13 missile weapons. They're tiny ships, you can see their tiny hulls, and they're on their way down here, and they may actually be trying to go for this deep space starbase. So, before anything else even happens, I'm going to spend some money and some of my resources and upgrade this starbase with all the modules so that it's a little more well equipped to deal with the Drenjin. This is this is a key thing to understand. As you scroll out from the detailed view where it can be hard to see things, you get to this level where you can see the icons for the ships. And so we can see the Drenjin coming in. They've sent a fleet of tiny ships after us cuz they're really ticked off. And since we have an exploration treaty with the Altarians, we can see one of the Drenjin planets now. Throthgard 1, over here close to them. It's a class 10 planet. It has some ships defending it. It has 3.1 billion people on it. It's producing 6 research, 8 manufacturing, and 307 influence. 
And as we take a look at that, we're like, okay, we got some idea where you guys are, and we got some idea that some of your people are headed this way. So we're going to see what they do next turn. I want before I end this episode, I want to see what they're going to do next turn. So deep space logistics only require 19 research. We didn't get the 15% bonus from that. And now I'm going to look at the, there's a whole slew of capsules over here. So we're going to head over in that direction to get those. This guy is going to grab this capsule over here. It didn't get the 15% bonus either. There's another one far off. So before we move, we want to switch back to the ion optimization we were going for. And we're going to tell him, head over here. And that's going to be the end of our turn. And we want to see what the Drengen are going to do. They moved out of this cloud, and it doesn't look like they're going to try to attack that deep space starbase. It looks like they're just going to try to head down in this direction. We should warn you, Bradley, the Drengen Empire built up a powerful military. Be wary of them. Okay. We're wary, all right. We're going we're gonna to keep an eye on them and see what they do. Again, we're back to doing the shuffle. Deep Space Logistics, we'll be able to put together a really good sized fleet if we can get this particular type of logistics, another 20 logistics. We're going to be able to put a lot of medium ships into a single fleet, and that will be formidable for the Drenjin Empire to deal with. This guy's just, he's got, I've got all these wormholes but I don't really have any oh there's a capsule right there okay he's gonna come over here we're waiting the iridium had a long term that time usually when a faction has a long term it means they're moving a lot of ships around oh so here are the Alt Altarians again saying it looks like you're having trouble with the Drenjan Empire and they're going to give us the prototype Breeze of Stone M4-1 to help with the war effort that's very nice of them I've never had a faction give me two warships in a single game so that is something completely new Deep Source Logistics still 19 turns away and still 19 turns away because we didn't get 15% from that. So here is this little... It's got six shields and one kinetic weapons. And um, we're going to do the same thing we kind of did earlier. We're going to move it over to uh, our one star base, the Jorgenrud star base, that is grabbing the only Promethean that we have. And back to drive miniaturization before the turn is up. I like that the Altarians have given us a ship twice now. They like us a lot. We're doing really good with diplomacy. At least for the friendly races. And we're doing pretty good with the Kryn because so far we're keeping them off our back and I haven't checked them in a while. Uh, he's letting us know about a, a election that's coming up. And he's saying, your military is so weak that it's a miracle you haven't already been conquered. So let's check diplomacy. He's Hostility goes from the right to the left. So the further they are on this outer ring to the right, the more likely they are to go with war. You could see ripe for conquest and the fact that we have a bunch of ascension crystals are, are big negatives to him, and even though we have a whole bunch of other positives. Um, and if we look at the treaty with him, let's see, we don't have an open borders treaty with him, do we? We're going we're gonna to see about that, yep. So we're going to make an open borders treaty. Our current relations with him are minus one. We can make open borders with him. We could try to get some Prometheum from him, but I don't think that would work. And because our relationship is minus one, any other trade we try to do is not going to be in our favor. Like, we can't even get him to give us 10 credits for open borders. So we're just going to do that and have that kind of add to our diplomacy. And then here is our prospector ship. There's a, a, 
a capsule down here in this nebula which really slows down your move and then there's another one over there so I'm gonna go back to deep space logistics and I'm gonna try to get this capsule even though it means getting down here in this nebula the Iridium Corporation again taking a very long turn it's like they're at war with someone or they're really moving ships around there's our deep space logistics 15 percent and there's another 15 percent so it was worth it to go into the nebula cloud to get that we get a new citizen and I think it's time to add another engineer to spit out ships faster and so to make that worthwhile I'm going to go back to planet earth add these citizens here, these engineers. This episode is almost an hour long already, so it's about time to call a start to it, but through research we have grabbed the deep core mine, so we're going to put it here. We're still going to save this middle slot for a fusion power plant when we get it, and the missionary center which synergizes so nicely with the port of call we're going to put there it earns benevolent ideology points every 10 turns and it levels up the port of call plus two so we can earn even more tourism money and then we're going to check oh and we got deep space logistics so that's great so we can't get any more logistics until galactic logistics it's the last of the logistics and it doesn't happen until the age of ascension which we are a long ways away from you can see we have 39 out of 84 technologies you need to research 84 technologies before you can move to the age of war so we're done with logistics we can just now focus on all the other technologies we want and we can put a whole bunch of ships in a single fleet in fact if we eject these we can see our maximum logistics now are 62 so we can put 10 medium ships into a single fleet which is awesome and that is where we want to be with the Drenjin bearing down on us. And in fact, I'm, I've scrolled back to take a look at where the Drenjin are, and we've lost their fleet. We didn't do a very good job the last two turns taking a look at where they were. And they're, they're somewhere, but we don't know where they are. and this ship is ready so the other thing that costs a lot of points besides logistics is hulls whether you're going for large scale construction which is going to take 90 turns or just hull capacity focus allowing our hulls to store 20 percent more stuff so we want to keep playing this this game here with the research we're coming down here and here are the snathy have placed a a star base right there in the hopes of grabbing both of those and that is somewhat disappointing to me so I'm gonna go through here there they are deep space star base sticks mining after this turn is over they should get both of those and we get another ideology point so we're going to grab malevolent because that's what we're doing in this game and you can see he got both those anti-miners so he beat us to there by like one turn which is just annoying <laughs> so I'm going to come down here and try to get that Illyrium and that antimatter and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that but it's worthwhile to try This guy's just getting experience points and nothing else. So we go back up to ion optimization. And this is going to be the last turn of the game before I call an end to this episode. This is the mid, what I call the middle of the game. Really, this is the midpoint of the game where you're just trying to build forces, do research and prep for wars and it's it's one turn after another it really is the I've got to play one more turn to get ready 
Got to play one more turn to see what's going on. Got to play one more turn to prep for the Drenjin, which are coming down here somewhere. Unless they move their ship because they're at war with someone else. That's one thing you can go in here through diplomacy and check and see who else are they at war with. Nobody but us right now. So wherever their little their little fleet of tiny ships went. But you can see the value, I hope, in uh, grabbing these survey ships from the Galactic Bazaar. The, the, the Mercenary DLC is just awesome for that reason. And there we go. We got some high capacity hulls there. That moves us closer. We're eight turns away. Flip back to ion optimization before we end this turn. So this is the end of episode 5. We're at 88% morale, which is really good. Our tax rate is fairly high. We're making a lot of money. We have 5,000 credits now. The Drenjin are the only people that we're at war with. We've got the maximum logistics for the age we're in. We're in pretty good shape for the coming war with the Drenjin, where we're actually going to have to create some legions and some fleets and go take the war to them. If we look at the balance of power, our military ranking is 7 out of 12, almost right in the middle. Research is 8 out of 12, and our production is 9 out of 12. We're going to keep moving up these ranks as we move towards turn 150. We're at turn 114 now. We're about halfway through the game. So this is where you can start to expect to make your move up the list. Nobody's been defeated yet. All 12 factions are still alive. At any rate, thank you for watching the Galactic Civilizations 3 newbie tutorial. I really hope you're getting a lot out of this. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments or contact me directly. I'm always on the Steam forums too, and I'm happy to answer questions there. And I really hope that this series of videos helps you get into Galactic Civilizations faster and be successful with it faster. I hope you get your wins quickly. Uh, most of us who play this game, we had to lose several games before we figured everything else out. So my hope with this video series is that you won't have to lose as many games before you become really good at it. For now, I'm Colors Fade and thank you for watching.